Just once in a decade, in a lifetime maybe, the world of entertainment is disrupted and utterly elated by something entirely new. Good Lord! It could be the script, the presentation, the players, or a combination of all three that team together to transform the ordinary into the original, to emerge with something completely different. And now for something completely different. Well, hello there. Uh, I certainly hope this grabbed your attention for our talk today, Leadership Development Meets Premium Gaming. Let me tell you a little bit about who's giving you this presentation today. My name's Heiko. I'm the founder and CEO of VRH, and I just want to give you a rough idea of who I am um, in this format so you know who you're dealing with, and we'll be spending about 20 minutes with each other, so we should get to know each other a little bit better. I have seven kids, and know before you ask, I'm not Mormon. I just love the act of making them that much. No, uh, I really like them. Uh, also, because I felt like I still had some free time, I got myself a dog. His name is Harvey, and he is awesome, as you can see. What else? I went to the University of Southern California. Go Trojans! I am an absolute lover of all things racing, e-sports, e uh, have a good setup behind myself here. Um, love Formula One and all these things, so big pastime of mine, which also spills over into how I myself as a leader try to grow. I have a little show called Leaders in Cars Getting Coffee. Check it out. It's a blatant ripoff from Jerry Seinfeld's Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. Not as good, but we take great leaders in awesome cars and try to learn what made them awesome. This will play into this presentation a little bit. Big fan of Eintracht Frankfurt Football Club. Just got our ass handed to us yesterday against Aberdeen, but uh, we love the diva. Nothing I can do against it. I love writing fiction in my free time. Again, way not as good as Michael Crichton, but it relaxes me. And again, it will figure into what I'm telling you today, this passion for creating great stories. My claim to fame, I was the head of HR, or as we called it, the head of RH, resourceful humans, because we killed the HR department at Crytek. Back in those days, one of the biggest uh, video game companies in Europe. I don't know where they are now. Um, and then I embarked on my own entrepreneurial st story and founded Resourceful Humans. That was around 12 years ago. And um, got uh, the award for being one of the top 40 entrepreneurs under 40 in Germany by Capital Magazine. We won the HR Excellence Awards for our software three times. Huge honor. And now uh, I've dedicated myself to a product that has come out of our efforts at Results for Humans, and I'm now running a new company called VRH. That gives you a rough idea of who I am. Now let's take a look at why we're here. VRH, premium gaming, meets leadership development or vice versa. We level up ambitious leaders with awesome VR games based on the world's best business books, like Netflix for learning. Imagine you could log on somewhere and instead of reading a book like you do on your Kindle, you'd actually get 90 minutes to interact with this book in a way where the content gets across to you and you can play through the learnings of that book. You do that in VR because you should be fully immersed in the learning content, and you have an AI that can coach you and guide you through translating what you've learned in those VR experience on the job. Now, I tell you, starting a business in 2023 uh, 20, uh, is uh, pretty much exactly like this picture. It is a bitch. Um, it is the worst time for VR, it is the worst time for funding. So the fact that we have traction with this product gives us enormous hope that <laughs> as the economy picks up eventually in two decades, uh, we, we'll have a winner here. But um, I think it's a, it's a great uh, uh, honor for the product that is still successful in the marketplace with the uh, first game that we have, which you will see later even though we have such a tough economic climate. I think it serves to weed out 
gimmicks from actually valuable products. So that I think works in our favor. Let's look at a little bit of a structure here. Yeah? I want to take you to why we do it, what we do, and how we do it. So what is the reason for existing for VRH and then go a little bit deeper. If we look at leadership development, I told you that I was the head of uh, human resources at Crytek and uh, I can tell you that the perception and the reality of leadership development is a little bit like this. Um, unfortunately, true. Yeah, it's uh, horrible. So it, the average leadership development class that you go to will probably feel a lot like this. Adams, here. Adam Lee. Here. Adamowski. Adamson. Here. Adler. Here. Anderson. Anderson. Here. Bueller. 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 You get the idea. However, it is a huge market. So in terms of market potential, we're talking about nearly 500 billion projected for 2030, which is about the GDP of Austria. And if we look at just a slice of executive education there, that's uh, about 100 billion by 2030, which is still you know, the GDP of Morocco. So uh, that, that is a sizable market that we're talking about there if we get it right. So what is the challenge that we're meeting there? We all see that if all companies don't innovate, if the leadership is not uh, evolving the organization fast enough and the teams and the business models, then you can very quickly become obsolete in our digital time. So we see winners and losers uh, very quickly. Just look at uh, ChatGPT, how quickly that thing rose to uh, stardom and how quickly they had active users. It's accelerated pace right now. So learning becomes crucial. Now, if we look at the problem for especially corporates in this environment is that they still do the Bueller, Bueller, Bueller routine, right? The conventional training can't meet this accelerated pace. So conventional training proves outdated. This is a, a report from the corporate executive board, which was published almost 30 years ago. And they said, what you need is simulation training. You need people to feel it, to get it, to immerse themselves in stuff. So there is training out there that actually works which looks a little bit like this, right? It's like special forces training. You actually go out on a mountain, you, you do survival training. The problem is that stuff doesn't scale and it's super expensive and it's also dangerous. You know, somebody falls off a cliff and then you lose your CEO there. But these things work. People come back and they've actually embedded the practices and the teachings and the principles of what was being transmitted to them and they go back to work next Monday and it probably shows up. However, as I said, this, this doesn't scale. Right? What solutions do we have otherwise? I mean, we have you know, the occasional great thing like the marshmallow challenge or Lego design thinking. But again, you know, it's, eh, does it really scale? Does it really have that impact? No, it's a bit more of a gimmick. What other digital solutions do we have out there? Well, we have Masterclass, right? Super high premium production value, amazing teachers, but still, First of all, 2D and passive. So I get to see Condoleezza Rice, I get to see Madeleine Albright, I get to hear James Cameron talk about Avatar, but why can't I be with him in Pandora? Wouldn't that be absolutely amazing? Now, I wanna take you on a little trip back in time and tell you why I feel that gaming is what answers the question to leadership development for the future. Here's a little Heiko, I was about six or seven years old and my dad bought me my first computer, which is ancient now, Commodore C64, and he brought a game home called Mickey's Space Adventure. Now this is a game where you have to find a, a crystal and uh, save an alien civilization, but what it basically does is it takes you on a trip through the solar system and you learn all about uh, the planets um, and their characteristics. And without knowing to this day, I can do Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. I can tell you all the planets and distance from the sun in order because I played this game. Not because the game taught me that as a primary purpose, but as a way of being able to beat the game, I learned this. I didn't understand this at the time, but uh, I understand it now. In a second game that I got to play when I went to work with my dad at Hewlett Packard, where he was the head of HR at that time, 
was King's Quest by Sierra. Um, wonderful game, Roberta Williams, one of the pioneers in the industry. And I basically learned to speak English because I had to look up all these, these uh, words in, in, the, in the dictionary to say, how do I, what, what, what's a mesa in, in English, you know? So knife, dagger, okay, get knife, get dagger. And then I could beat the game. So the game essentially taught me a language. So I, I can learn content, I can learn languages, and I'm being entertained. It's not the primary purpose. It is a, a by-effect of being engaged by an adventure story. So, yeah, you, also a big, big part of that story is that you constantly die um, when you fall off the tree or something. So you, you also learn through hardship. It's challenging, right? It's not easy. It's, it's, it's earned what you do there. Ouch. There we go. Then I told you that when I was at Crytek, I had this moment um, where we were making the multiplayer for Crisis 2, and we noticed that in the lunch break, all our colleagues would play a game uh, to, to relax during, uh, during work hours. Um, and they played Left 4 Dead. And we were like, why are you playing Left 4 Dead? We're making a multiplayer game. And they were like, well, because our multiplayer sucks and, and Left 4 Dead is much better. So we're like, well, why? And they're like, well, their, their game design is much better. The, the way they do this, you know, and the, the way we have to collaborate as a team is different to our design. So we literally looked into that and we said, that's stupid. You have to make a game where you actually feel and believe that this is the best product in the market. You have to make something that you'd rather play than Left 4 Dead. Otherwise, why are we even doing this? And we looked into the design of Left 4 Dead and it's, it's really genius, right? It's, it's a, one of the first examples where collaboration was dialed up to 12 that you couldn't beat this game unless you really effectively <coughs> collaborated and communicated. It's a masterclass in game design. Otherwise, you're dead. The last game that informed me on this journey was um, The Last of Us Part Two. This game has enormously split the gaming community. <coughs> Why? Because there was a lesson embedded there as well, but some gamers didn't want a lesson, they just wanted to be entertained. Because it pulls kind of like a 180 on you in the middle of the game that it switches you into a, another character, the character that you've been opposing this whole time. And you have to fight yourself, you have to fight Ellie. And, and suddenly you get the backstory on this girl that you hated all along. And, and you, you have to almost, you're forced into empathy. It's not a, it's not a pleasant experience, but you come out of this and, and you go, holy shit, I've seen both sides of the story now. And it really leaves you with something. It's more than a game. It's, it's, it's an actual experience. And it really impacted me to say, games can be so much more as a medium than just entertaining, right? If you want to learn more about this, uh, I highly recommend um, all these lessons from Crytek I put together in a GDC keynote development culture at Crytek, worth seeing. Take a, another look at VR, right? VR is a bad rap right now. General state of virtual reality is a little bit coined by the Zuckerberg metaverse. It's Nintendo Wii graphics and uh, yeah, it's mostly meeting rooms and gimmicky games. Not really that great, I think. But Again, I had an experience where um, at Crytek we were playing games with the kids of our colleagues and we, we had a prototype for an underwater game where they had to collaborate together and steer a little Nemo through the water um, and, and steer him clear of sharks. Take, take a look how the kids react to uh, virtual reality or 3D at the time. <laughs> to say they loved it right so it also works for adults here's Richie's Planks experience and they did this with professional footballers and these guys knew they, they, they knew they were on a flat surface in, in a safe room right the guy doesn't go he does not go he, he simply refuses 
<laughs> he says, oh, I'm sweating, my, my, my heart rate's up. And it, before they took the goggles off, he looked around, he saw it's not real. Oh. Your brain accepts this as real. It's not enough that. Yeah. I feel like I'm just going to tip over. You've got to get to the end. Oh, of God, there. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, this is If you're brave, you jump off the end. No way, I can't actually do it. <laughs> so we know that well done VR is powerful. Half-Life Alex, uh, Horizon Call of the Mountain, these are high production value games that really immerse you. You forget the world around you and you're really in the game. But it has to be well done. It can't be Nintendo Wii graphics with... Uh, it, it doesn't work, right? Um, also, there's a little niche player entering the market pretty soon who we think will give this whole topic another boost. Apple with uh, their product will definitely uh, give this whole thing another shot. Now, the last thing that we looked at obviously is books. There is great books out there like this one by the former uh, Navy submarine commander David Marquet who talks about how he turned uh, the worst boat in the US Navy into the best one by not giving any more orders. Uh, USA Today calls this one of the 12 best business books of all time. So there's, there's content out there that is awesome. But books also are not enough. Keynotes are not enough for leadership development. I mean, imagine you're, you're boarding a plane with, with your kid or your partner or, or you're just going alone. And the pilot says, ladies and gentlemen, because of cost-cutting measures um, on this flight, uh, I'm the first generation pilot who actually didn't get any simulator training, any actual flying experience, but I've read every damn book on the subject and I've listened to every keynote by every great pilot out there. We should be fine on this night flight to San Francisco. Would you board that plane? Fuck no, right? Th th that's crazy. It's that, that's not how knowledge is uh, transmitted. So if we then look at the business opportunity out there for VRH and say what creates business value, what doesn't, what is engaging and what is not, then yeah, you, you have your room scale VR meeting rooms. We think no clear value at not engaging. You have stuff that creates some business value, but it's not very engaging, books and keynotes. Good. They can be entertaining, but uh, don't really bring that much. You have your digital twins. You learn how to handle machinery uh, in training. Makes it safer, but usually you just get a forklift. It's not like you get a forklift and you drive it on Mars or something, right? Um, you have skill-based VR training, which is, you know, you walk through a shop and you learn how to sell something to a customer. Again, it's it, it, it more sort of the first wave of digitization, right? You just take a normal product and you put it in the realm of, VR or, or gaming, but it's not digitalization. It's not reimagined for the medium. So then you have on the other side, you have stuff like Masterclass and, and, and uh, VR Job Simulator by Alchemy. Um, you have the Spacewalk, ER, Mission ISS, or Half-Life Alex. They're highly engaging, but they don't teach that much, right? Then you have stuff that is highly engaging and creates a lot of business value. That is the executive retreats that we talked about earlier, but it doesn't scale and it's super expensive. So we believe that VRH with cinematic learning can get the best of what those retreats provide and be highly engaging and create a lot of value add. So then, summarize this part. Conventional leadership development is ineffective. Well-designed games can teach difficult content effectively and VR used correctly is powerful. But now to the point. Games. You want games? I'll give you games. 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 Work strong. Let's step in. What we do. We take books like David Marquet's Turn the Ship Around and we make a game out of it. Let's, let's hear it in David's words. I'm David Marquet, former commander of the USS Santa Fe. I had a life-changing experience when I was assigned to this ship, the worst in the fleet. And by making changes to the way we treated each other, we had an enormous outcome. We had the best performance, the best retention, and over the long run created the most num number of leaders.
Congratulations, officers. You've been selected for a special mission, testing and operating the newest submarine in the fleet, the USS Santa Fe. In a world of stealth and darkness, where any error can cost lives or start wars, Captain David Marquet took the most lethal killing machine ever designed by man and did what no captain had done before. He turned followers into leaders. Experience the incredible journey of the U.S. Navy nuclear submarine Santa Fe. Go deep and witness the unbelievable turnaround that took Santa Fe from the worst to first and made it the best performing ship in the fleet ever. Crush Depth. Meet the leader that you truly are. So what is this? VR Dive is a four-player multiplayer. We can play this completely remotely, but you can also be in a room together. Uh, get the game from the platform. We immerse yourself slowly. You have the tutorials. You actually go through the harbor in a mini-sub and, and get down. So we decompress people into the game then we can watch the game. We have an, an AI and observers and maybe even the author himself who can remotely be there to coach the players. You get the split screen. You always see where the Santa Fe is on her mission. You have several biometrics that you can observe at the same time. So there's uh, a highly entertaining way to watch this for people and to see how their colleagues are performing. Um, that looks a little bit like this. Get our depth okay. up, please. Depth up to 10 Cap feet. I, I see something red uh, at 130. Uh, Captain, can you come here and see what I see? <laughs> can you see my screen now? So you see a red spot? Yeah, I see. Yeah. What could that be? Uh, red is trouble. Red is trouble. So. People, people love this, right? And at the end, they have a tangible outcome. They know how it's, it's a rescue mission that they're on, and they see how they've stacked up, how many people they've saved off the sinking ship, and they even get a CNN clip based on their performance <laughs> bespoke to what the outcome of their game was. So again, a decompression that before you come out of the VR experience, the, uh, the impact of what later you should apply on the job, the things that you should have learned, are presented to you in a highly entertaining way. Now, the greatest magic of this is probably summarized by one of the players, um, one of the early adopters of this from uh, Accenture Technologies, Jürgen, is summarizing this for you. Most excited about the fact that people very quickly behave like they behave in real life. What we were trying to do was really uh, highlight the difference between an environment where people just wait to be told what to do, or where they step forward, take initiative and say, hey, this is what I think needs to happen, or maybe even this is what I intend to do because I already know it needs to happen. So people behave quickly like they behave in real life. This, this is th the magic of well done VR in a learning experience is you actually learn because you behave like you would. That's just like in the outdoor trainings, right? There's, there's nothing to hide behind. There's no media training or anything. You, you show your real self, so you also learn for your real self. Now again, to summarize, this is the usual complaints is there's little to no time VRH is convenient. It's like Netflix episode length VR gaming. Anytime, get the headset. The leaders are not interested in the Bueller, Bueller, Bueller kind of training. This is entertaining. They're like, take me back in. I, I want to go back to Santa Fe. T take me back. There's no direct return for a lot of these things. Masterclass is, is great. It's entertaining. I love it. But so what do we get from it on, on the job? Here, it's impactful. The games and the AI coaching, they actually perform on the job. You see this translated. 
And the cost, well, it's scalable because uh, VR actually pays off over time. How do we do this? In conclusion, the magic is called cinematic learning. Playing is believing. We believe that inserting learning content in a player's mind by anchoring it in mastering a, a shared challenging movie-like VR gaming experience is the silver bullet. It's immersive, memorable, and earned. Remember, back to Mickey's Space Quest or King's Quest. You can die. You, you, can, you, can, you have to actually challenge yourself. So if you look at competitors' products, you know, they're, again, they're like classroom in VR, whereas we put you on a freaking submarine in the Yellow Sea. We say this is a, a three-vector game, right? So we have to extill the core message from the book, so define the X, we have to match it up to game mechanics that support that X. And we have to find a setting that is cinematic, like a Hollywood movie that we can immerse the players in, in a Netflix episode length. So let's take a look at this in terms of our next product, the VR airlift based on Ori Braffman's awesome book, The Starfish and the Spider. We'll be putting uh, a couple of liters, six liters into the candy bombers during the 1948 Berlin Airlift to learn about centralization and decentralization and leadership. So we have the three vectors. We, we've extracted uh, centralization, decentralization, coordinating the squadron of four planes going from Frankfurt Airport to Berlin Tempelhof to bring food into the blockaded city of Berlin to keep it from being taken over by the communists and drop candy for the starving kids over there. So this is challenging, but it's also fun. Right? People want to play that. And the learning comes by the way of playing it because you have a mission. Save a city. You target Berlin. Right? That, that is cinematic learning in a nutshell. Everything that's in the book, you learn on board this airplane as a squadron, as a team. Let me put it in the words of a, a, an ESA astronaut who is a fantastic lady, Nicola Winter. As a leader, nothing boosts confidence quite like meeting an overwhelming simulated challenge. By engaging with it fully in story-driven virtual reality, VRH games enable the skills to master a particular problem. Each time you get a bit better, your comfort zone expands a little. When you face similar problems in real life, you think clearly and act decisively. That, in a nutshell, is the magic of cinematic learning. Thank you, Nicola. Final, coup de gras is Zizu, our AI, a generative game engine. So not only do we have AI coaching, which by now probably everybody has, but we have a very unique twist on it. We have generative content. Every game, as it's being played, learns about the player's strengths and weaknesses and creates additional modules bespoke for that particular set of players. So we can scale not just add-ons for one game, but as we learn, as Sisu becomes smarter in extracting information for more and more players and more and more organizations, we can start creating games through our generative engine. So Sisu will be our uh, magic ingredient, our secret sauce for taking this to scale and not falling into the trap of GTA or something where you need 10 years and a trillion dollars to make games. We will be able to make this with a reasonable budget and we will still be able to put out a lot of content to keep players engaged and keep organizations retained for the VRH platform. In summary, we have the hottest authors with the coolest business books out there who are also doing the marketing for us and, and, and they are uh, proven in the market because people are picking up those books. We have a growing platform of premium cinematic VR learning games based on these books like the VR Dive, like the VR Airlift, and other up-and-coming books and uh, games based on, for example, the stories of Starbucks president Howard Bihar or the CEO of Hewlett Packard. Um, so there's real cool stuff coming. We have real-time asynchronous and remote coaching view ready for VR experience for facilitators or AI if you want to play alone. We have Sisu, who constantly generates new game content based on the leader's needs. We have integration to learning and performance management systems. And most importantly, we have delighted leaders that rock their business because they played our games. In conclusion, the question that stays is, why read a business book when you can experience this? 
And that is the question that BRH answers. And I hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you very much.